Shelters, tunnels, and underground bunkers were hot topics for military strategists before the war in Iraq. Saddam's presidential palace in Baghdad was assumed to house a network of such underground hideaways and was quickly annihilated. Yet Americans have not managed to find anything of the sort. But the change in focus of the international arms race to create weapons specifically designed to seek and destroy underground bunkers continues. The most effective way of destroying subterranean hideouts, according to proponents of a controversial new bunker-busting bomb, is by using nuclear weapons. The task of developing such a weapon has fallen on a bomb manufacturer, Los Alamos. The Bunker Busters, seen here in action penetrating an underground hiding place in Afghanistan, could be equipped with atomic warheads. Many congressmen what want to see these weapons deployed is, as soon as possible. There are a lot of other nations in the world that know one thing, if you get deep enough underground with enough concrete and steel above your head, they can't get you. And that's exactly the kind of facilities that are being built by our potential enemies today. There's only one way to get those, and that is through a precise, low-yield nuclear weapon. These mini-atom bombs are intended to wreak havoc far underground, according to advocates. Any biochemical weapons material in underground bunkers would be instantly engulfed in a huge inferno and destroyed. Radiation would remain underground, shielded from civilian populations. But environmental organizations think differently. They say each of these atom bombs would pollute the earth around the bomb site and are almost impossible to control. For example, a 10 kiloton nuclear weapon, um, slightly smaller than the Hiroshima nuclear weapon, would have to be buried 150 feet to contain the fallout. And currently, the only earth penetrating warhead in the US arsenal can penetrate 10 feet. Penetrating further than that destroys the, the, um, the bomb itself prevents it from firing. These smaller nuclear weapons, that's what it means. There is staunch so opposition to the new bomb. Democratic but Senator Edward Kennedy is worried about the consequences. Weapons, what what them, if the US weapons. deployed such a bomb in Syria with fallout that could spread to Israel? On the one hand, the United States says, look, we are trying to negotiate with the North Koreans in order to reduce uh, the possibilities of of nuclear exchange and miscalculation on the Korean Peninsula. But don't pay any attention to what we say out there. We're threat danger of nuclear weapons. We're going over here and develop some new ones. How does that work? How does that, what kind of message does that say in this world today? Who's going to buy that? It is a study. It is nothing more and nothing less. And, 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 and it is not pursuing, and it is not developing, and it is not building, it is not manufacturing, it is not deploying, and it is not using. Just a study baloney. Does anyone really believe that? The repeal of Sprint First opens the door for America to begin to develop nuclear weapons again. During the Second World War, the researchers at Los Alamos earned great prestige for their work on the first atom bombs. The research contracts for the mini-nukes and bunker busters have given the agency renewed vigor, which is looking at the possibility of conducting tests of this new arsenal. There is a desire to, um, to exercise nuclear weapon design skills that have lain dormant since the end of the Cold War, or the argument is that they've lain dormant. Um, and where we could potentially see this going is a return to uh, nuclear testing in the United States. Testimonies from Senate committees indicate that the international consensus on refraining from nuclear testing could be breached by the U.S. once these new weapons are in production. As deterrence, nuclear weapons posed less actual risk, but making them less powerful could see their use proliferate. One of Europe's most renowned armament experts, Francois Eisbourg, assesses the Americans' decision to bring nuclear weapons back to the table. Depuis la fin des années 1940, les États-Unis n'ont pas cessé de développer ou souvent de déployer des armes nucléaires tactiques, euh, des mini-nukes, qui ont été présentes en Europe pendant 
des dizaines d'années, y compris des, des, des obus de mortier nucléaire, des missiles RR nucléaires, des mines anti-sous-marines nucléaires, et même les, fameux, les fameuses bombes que l'on peut mettre dans une valise, hein, ce qu'on appelait la, la « rucksack bomb euh, », qui ont été présentes en Europe jusqu'à la fin de la guerre froide. Euh, donc présenter ceci comme une révolution euh, serait, euh, serait faux. Meanwhile, as celebrations for the 300-year anniversary of the founding of St. Petersburg get underway, President Putin makes no mention of the Americans' designs, at least not in public. In fact, there is much celebration over the signing of the sort nuclear disarmament treaty in the Duma, which laid out a timetable for both Russia and the U.S. to reduce their nuclear stockpiles over the next 10 years. Я считаю принципиально важным то, что наш нынешний саммит убедительно подтвердил, что российско-американскому взаимодействию альтернативы нет, ни с точки зрения обеспечения национальных интересов наших стран, ни с точки зрения задач укрепления международного мира и безопасности. The Cold War arsenals are destroyed, with the West bankrolling the destruction of Russian rockets, as seen here. Yet Putin has also announced the development of a new generation of nuclear weapons as the old stockpiles are destroyed. Could this be the start of a new arms race? La logique de retour à une course aux armements, elle est contenue moins dans cette décision américaine que dans la doctrine Bush, c'est-à-dire la doctrine dite de prévention, de frappe préemptive. Euh, où les États-Unis disent en effet à, à des pays qui peuvent leur déplaire euh, que les États-Unis les frapperont avant qu'ils n'aient acquis une capacité de dissuasion. Euh, ceci explique en partie pourquoi la Corée du Nord euh, met aujourd'hui les bouchées doubles pour devenir une puissance nucléaire de plein exercice et pourquoi l'Iran est en train de construire aussi vite qu'il le peut euh, des, euh, des centrifugeuses à Natanz et dans d'autres sites. Russia seeks to regain its place amongst the leading world powers to match the might implied by Putin's grandiose military parades. But it has yet to be seen if this will be enough to draw the attention of the Bush administration and reignite old tensions. Je vois naître des, des tensions fortes entre les États-Unis et la Russie sur la façon de gérer le problème iranien. Euh, il en a été beaucoup question à Saint-Pétersbourg et, et, et à Evian. Et, et je vois bien entendu euh, des tensions, et pas seulement entre la Russie et les États-Unis, mais entre les États-Unis et la plupart de leurs autres partenaires, euh, sur euh, les implications de la, des doctrines qui sont basées sur la préemption et la, et la prévention, dès lors que ces doctrines se situent en dehors des règles du droit international. Euh, C'est beaucoup plus là-dessus euh, que j'ai des craintes que sur, la, que sur les travaux que le Sénat vient d'autoriser sur les, les mini-nux. Over 40 world leaders were treated to a display of Russian military might in St. Petersburg. But despite some palling around between Bush and Putin, tensions between the powers could make a return against the backdrop of the crisis in Iran.